Friends, my sermon this morning is called When to Have Faith. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Would you like to have a seat? My wife, Lori, and I there, we like going to the movies. We go about once a week. The last three times we've gone, however, in a row, we've witnessed people yelling at someone. This last time, it was directed at us. We were standing there in the concessions line, and a nice worker, you know, opened a new line right to the right of us. And she says right out loud, I'll take the next person in line. So Lori and I stand there, and I say to the couple in front of us, do you guys want to go? It didn't move. No response. So I said to the nice worker, worker lady, we'll go, and we placed our order. Now it was what, a good two minutes later that the couple in front of us came back into consciousness from looking at their phones, and the woman, you know, she lost her marbles there for a minute. It was like there was this wall holding back her anger from rushing out. And this popcorn injustice, it destroyed that wall, and out the anger came. You know, it seems like the world that we once knew is lost. Hmm? It's like we've all gone out and gotten offended, angry, hostile, and rude. We've gone from love your enemies and your neighbors to destroy your enemies and distrust your neighbors. You know, I read a news story this week that said Northside ISD has over 275 teacher vacancies going into the school year. Northeast ISD has 180. Here's a group of people, teachers, that our society depends upon that in large numbers don't feel like getting yelled at anymore. Distrusted and vilified by politicians, disrespected by parents, underpaid and underappreciated. I suppose we really shouldn't be surprised at this. And, by the way, I hope you'll join me next Sunday as we gather around, stretch out our hands and pray for these women and men that are teachers. I'm surprised, I'm not surprised, but you know, I am discouraged, discouraged and weary, tired of this enmity, and quite frankly, rampant immaturity. I'm exasperated by the tribalism and afraid about the way all this anger just flows unchecked around us all the time. So let's talk this morning about when to have faith. The short answer is now. Now is the time to have faith. Because maybe you're feeling like I am this morning, discouraged, overwhelmed, and tired. If you are, then you're in the right place with us today. Let's look together again at the reading from Hebrews today. You're going to need it in front of you as I speak to you. It starts at the bottom of page 6 into page 7 in your bulletin. Here, we're going to learn about how faith will help us remember when discouraged, find strength when overwhelmed, and persevere when tired. First, faith will help you remember when discouraged. Look at verses 29 to 31 there with me. The writer of Hebrews reminds us about how, by faith, the people passed through the Red Sea, how the walls of Jericho fell, and how Rahab didn't perish with those who were disobedient. Dig with me a second a little deeper about what this means. In each of these instances, do you see that the very survival of the people Israel and the line of salvation that brought us Jesus was at stake? And despite the odds, Pharaoh's army, the fortified walls, the entire city, of Jericho in Rahab's case, God brought them through. 
Remember, we are told here, that God has been faithful. God has brought you out in the past, and God will bring you through again. You this morning who are discouraged, look back. Look back and remember the hand of God that has preserved you. Look back into the story of your family and friends. Look to the story of our church and remember how our Lord has sustained and provided for us. Friends, remember when you get discouraged. Discouragement has a loud voice, doesn't it? Kind of like that lady in the popcorn line. But the voice often speaks to us from the inside. Discouragement says, you know, this is bad and it's not ever going to get any better. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Discouragement says this is terrible and it's only going to get more terrible. Friends, remember God's faithfulness and let faith rise up in you. I ask you, do you think... God has gotten you this far to let you down now. I know that we're Episcopalians, but we ought to testify. Hmm? Testify. Testify to one another about the hand of God in your life and the things that he's done for you. Encourage one another in the Lord, friends, with your stories of how God has brought you out Second, faith gives you strength when you are overwhelmed. A fun Bible study would be for you to go through and read all about uh, the people mentioned in verses 32 to 40 here in that big middle paragraph. Uh, We won't do it here, but you can read in Judges about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah. Just look at verse 34 there with me. Look at it with me. Quench the pot. Quenched the power of fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. Escaped the edge of the sword, David's escape from Absalom in 1 Kings 19. Put foreign armies to flight, how about David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. Women receive their dead, like the widow of Zarephath did in 1 Kings 17. And we could go on with this Bible study. Notice with me from the second half of verse 35 on to verse 40, there were people, it's listed there, do you see, that it didn't work out so well for. Torture, imprisonment, being sawed in two, like the legend says that the prophet Isaiah was. They all, do you see, in verse 39, were commended for their faith, even if they didn't receive the rest and peace and total victory God promised them. In verse 40, it wasn't until God provided something better in Jesus Christ that their faith was made perfect as the plan of salvation made its way all the way to us. There's something you see that all these people in verses 32 to 40 have in common. They were all overwhelmed. They were faced with impossible odds, faced with something that was stronger than they were. So now look back at the middle of verse 34 with me. I love this. Do you see they were all made strong out of weakness? Listen to me carefully. Faith gives us strength when we are overwhelmed. Hear me. God does not need your strength. He's got all strength and all power. What in the world does he need yours for? Ever thought about this? You can tell yourself, I just got to be stronger. Tell yourself that if you need to. But maybe what God needs from you today is the one thing that God doesn't have. Weakness. Your weakness. Have you given the Lord your weakness? Have you acknowledged to him that you're overwhelmed, go ahead and tell him. Tell him right now. I'll wait a second. I'll do it for you. God, I'm overwhelmed. Good. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego 
as they were facing that fiery furnace, what did they say? If we perish, we perish, but our God is able to deliver us. David, when he walked down into Goliath's valley, picked up five smooth stones, put them in his pocket next to his slingshot, and said to that giant, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Faith is weakness firmly holding on to God's strength. And in return, we get God's strength. One day, Peter and John walked by a man who was lame from birth, sitting begging at the gates of the temple in Acts chapter 3. As Peter reached out his right hand and lifted him up on his feet, by faith, his long, weakened limbs were made strong. And that same power is here for you today. Take that weakness, friend, to Jesus and let him strengthen all those weak places in you. Let him heal your brokenness. Am I making sense up here? Say yes. Finally, faith gives perseverance to the tired. You know, no words from me can improve the exalted Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Look at it there in your bulletin, please. It's, they're amazing words. This life, and let's face it, these last years have made us tired. Tired like pouty frouty. Tired and frustrated and angry and defeated like that poor lady in the popcorn line. God bless her. Tired and frustrated and angry and defeated like Lori and I were. Being accosted at our safe place, the movies. Worried about our teachers, our city, our nation, our world. Friends, faith gives perseverance to the tired. Like a crowd cheering on runners in a race. It says there, do you see it? There is a cloud of witnesses, the saints who have gone before us, cheering us on. Are you feeling overmatched today? Did you know that Moses is right beside you, cheering you on? That's what it says here. Are you feeling shame and rejection? Rahab is there saying in your ear this morning, you can make it, you can do it. I did it, you can too. So are the saints in your life who have gone before you. Take a moment and think about those folks, the faithful departed you know and love, who are around you, witnessing you, cheering you on today. Verse 1 says we must lay aside that weight that we are carrying like a backpack full of bricks shame unforgiveness and guilt listen to me Jesus has paid for all that stuff so you just need to drop it drop that backpack full of those bricks that you've been carrying it's been holding you back for too long he says put aside the sin that clings so closely to to you like the cloud of witnesses, sin surrounds you too. So just lay that sin aside. In your weakness, ask for strength to overcome it. And let Jesus raise you out of that hole that sin has gotten you in. Weak as you are, resolve to take up your cross and follow him. And he'll help you. Now, run with perseverance the race set before you. Verse 2. Look to Jesus. Do you see it? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Friends, what are you focusing on today instead of the Lord? Look away from your shame, your deficiencies, your temptations, and even your suffering. Look away also from your worldly joys, pleasures, and profits, and instead fix your eyes upon Jesus, on who he is and what he's done for you. Look to Jesus, who is the pioneer of our faith, who has gone into the uncharted territory of death and sin and conquered it for us. Jesus, the word made flesh, is our alpha, the beginner of all things. Jesus, who is the perfecter of our faith, 
the one in whom all things will end. Jesus, who has justified us through his blood at Calvary, who is sanctifying us now by the power of the Holy Spirit and who will glorify us in the end when we see him face to face. Jesus, who is our Omega, will never let us out of his hand. Jesus, from whose love nothing can separate us. Faith, friends, faith. Faith that gives us memory when discouraged, strength when we are overwhelmed, and perseverance when tired. Beloveds, may faith rise up in you so you keep your head up. Keep facing forward. Keep moving. Don't give up. Your faith, put it in Jesus because everything else will fail you. He is for you, not against you. Your weaknesses, do you see, they qualify you for this. The hole that you're in, you know what? He's going to pull you out of it for his glory. Come to him. Believe in him. Trust in him. And he will see you all the way home. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.